Ladies and gentlemen, let's for a game into the com video. Let us discuss a recent report that we're going to be hearing quite a lot of graphics APIs and low level graphics APIs, more to the point, at the Game Developer Conference, which is going to be, of course, taking place next month in San Francisco. And it's actually going to be three different low level API sessions. And they feature the four major contributors for PC graphics APIs, which are, well, Microsoft, AMD, NVIDIA, and Intel. Unfortunately, the description of the sessions is rather limited. There's not that much super duper information, but what there is, is fairly interesting. So I'm sure many of you have already heard of Mantle. And of course, it's going to be a very interesting uh, low level API. The basic pr premise here is, of course, API is effectively the way that the application controls and speaks to the graphics card. So in other words, it says, I need you to draw this box. And the GPU will, well, draw the box according to the specifications. So for example, if it needs to be a box yay tall by yay wide and a nice green color, then by George, that's exactly what's going to happen. And of course, the simpler the API is, the closer that you can actually just talk directly to the graphics card and the less wiggle room and interpretation that you get between the graphics cards instructions coming from the game and actually speaking directly to the hardware the better mantle from amd is one of those ways to basically get past this and we've spoken a lot about mantle before but there's definitely from the perspective of the pc game space now that the consoles are becoming much more similar to consoles uh, pcs uh, or rather the consoles are becoming similar to PCs with x86 slash 64 CPUs, uh, DirectX 3D um, 11 GPUs, and certainly OpenGL uh, for late their specifications as well, complete and utterly compatible. This is a really good thing for PCs because it means that, well, we can start moving forward for games development. Now, of course, there are issues with this, predominantly that the next generation consoles aren't super powerful, but we are seeing some interesting comments from Microsoft and others as well. So let's let's discuss this. First of all, one of the conferences is DirectX evolving Microsoft's graphics platforms. This is presented by Microsoft's Anuj Goslia. I pronounce that. I butchered the man's name. I um. I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce that correctly. Development manager at Windows Graphics. And they have said in the description for nearly 20 years, DirectX has been the platform used by games developers to create the fastest, most visually impressive games on the planet. However, you asked us to do more. You asked us to bring closer to the metal. And to do so, in parallel assortment of hardware, you also need to test better tools so that you can squeeze every last drop of performance out of your PC, tablet, phone, and console like it is the blood of your enemies. Wait, never mind. Um, come learn our plans to deliver, not the blood of the enemies, my I add. There's also another one entitled Direct 3D Futures. This is by someone I can actually pronounce the name of, which is a good sign. Uh, Microsoft's Max McMullen. And he is a development lead at, well, once again, Windows Graphics. The description is, come learn how future changes to Direct 3D will enable next generation games to run faster than ever before. In this session, we will discuss future improvements in D3D that will allow developers to an unprecedented level of hardware control and reduce CPU rendering overhead across a broad ecosystem of hardware. If you use this cutting edge 3D graphics in your games, middleware or engines and want to uh, fit effectively uh, and efficiently build rich and immersive visuals, you don't want to miss this talk. And finally, there's another one entitled Approaching Zero Drive Overhead in OpenGL. This is presented by a buttload of people. I'm certainly not going to read all of them. No offense to them, but uh, the video is Cass Everett, uh, there's OpenGL engineer. Um, as ta uh, the video is Tim Foley, advanced rendering technologies, Intel's John McDonald. Oh, you know, I'll just read them all. John McDonald, uh, senior software engineer. Engineer, the video is Graham Sellers, senior manager and system architect at AMD. There we go, I've read everyone. So, uh, the description for this little beauty regards, um, or should I say, is described as the following 
Driver overhead has been a frustrating reality for games developers for the entire life of the PC industry. On the desktop, tap, desktop systems, driver overhead can decrease frame rates, while on mobile devices, driver overhead is more insidious robbing both battery life and frame rate in this unprecedented sponsored session graham sellers amd bloody hell now it's just telling me them anyway all right i'm just going to say the dudes that have, i've just read the names of will present higher level concepts available in today's opengl implementations that radically reduce driver overheads by 10 times or more the techniques presented will apply all major vendors and suitable for across multi-platforms. In addition, they will demonstrate practical demos of the techniques in action in ostensible open source comparison framework. Isn't that beautiful, ladies and gentlemen? Isn't that basically the happy source? It is, isn't it? It makes me just smile. Have you ever seen a British man smile? Well... Probably if you've seen my latest vlog. But regardless, I am smiling. On a serious note, though, this is really cool. Um, I'm actually really happy. It actually, I'm happy about the DirectX thing. But I'm happier still about Microsoft doing something further about... I'm happy about the OpenGL. I am. But the DX, I'm really happy about. Because it means that... Microsoft are going to be taking the whole DX thing very seriously, and I'm very curious to see what they're going to be doing. Are we going to be seeing DX12, maybe? Or, I mean, obviously it's not going to be implemented tomorrow, so when they announce this stuff, it's not going to be like, oh, hi guys, by the way, next, you know, future set. It's pro uh, feature set, I'm sorry. So it's it's definitely going to be coming into the next few weeks and months and years that this stuff is going to be coming. But, here's the thing. The performance is gets murdered with DirectX. Um, it's not good at multi-core rendering. Um, it's not good at large batch call, at uh, draw calls, I'm sorry. it. You know what, I could go for a different, a, a whole slew of different things, and I've discussed many of them before, but effectively it's just not efficient. It's crappy if it's got a low uh, end CPU to work with, and even if it's got high end CPU to work with, it's still missing performance. I mean, all you have to do is look at the benchmarks of, like, Mantle on Battlefield 4. It's just painfully obvious. And it means... Here's, here's the problem with it. There are three issues, right? I, I don't... Personally, harsh words, I don't give a rat's ass about mobile gaming. I'm just going to be honest. I don't dislike it, but it just... Personally, I don't use it, right? So it's not that I hate it. It's not that I'm ragging on it. It's not that I think it sucks. It's just that I don't use it, so I don't really care about it. I, I report it for news, but it doesn't really affect me. However, for the desktop use even, I can be someone who buys up the latest end graphics card, and I'm still not getting the performance I should be, simply because of these issues. But let's ignore me for a moment. Let's ignore those of us who pay like really high-end prices if this type of optimization happens it means that the low to mid-range cards and cpus are actually going to be a lot more effectively anyway powerful because they're going to be able to play the games a hell of a lot better this means that you won't need to drop so much money to play games at decent rates i mean you could check out the uh, mantle benchmarks. Now, I'm not saying that a low-end, I, you know, a, a low-end um, AMD CPU like the 4300 is suddenly going to be able to run like i7 speeds because that's not realistic and that's not feasible. Because obviously, you know, the i7s are also going to get a boost as well as, of course, the GPUs and everything else you'd expect. But what it does mean is we're going to be getting a much more efficient games. And this is great because it means that we're going to get much more realism in the games. And there's a hell of a lot of different issues that I've got with games right now. Um, I could go into a dozen different rants. And I'm not going to because I you know, value you guys with the sanity and all. But a couple of things that really bug me. Clipping in games pisses me off. I really noticed that. I'm actually more than anti-aliasing, to be honest, or aliasing, because anti-aliasing is actually a removal of the jaggers, while the aliasing is the horrible jaggers that we wish to destroy uh, with extreme bias and callousness. In addition to that, another thing that really bugs me is crampy physics. 
it is getting better with, say, Havoc. I do wish AMD um, would get permission from NVIDIA, or rather NVIDIA would just grant blanket permission to use hardware physics on the GCN architecture or something. Um, it's a real shame that because, in my opinion, hardware physics, it's like once you've used hardware physics, you don't really want to turn it off. I first used it on my GTX 480, and I'm not saying like it, it makes the games incredible and that's all that I ever want to play. Sometimes it can just be dust and debris, but it certainly does make a difference, and it tells me that if this was utilized 100% effectively and developers weren't just putting it in just to say it used hardware physics, they really pushed it, it would be amazing. So physics is another thing. Um, AI, there's, there's dozens, dozens of different things, but unfortunately there's this disjointed way that the graphics card have to speak simply because of the large environment um, of GPUs. I mean, for example, you can release a game and, okay, your target specifications for that game, for like the really, you know, to make the game run okay. Okay, you know what, let's even just use FIFA as an example. Okay, so the requirements for the sucker for FIFA are 4 gigabytes of RAM, um, a G, uh, AMD Randeon 4800 or GTS 250, um, a high-end dual-core or a quad-core type of CPU. Meanwhile, recommended 4 gigs, an R9 or better, or a GTX 660. Interesting. Uh, DX version 11, and an FX 8000 or uh, a high-end Intel CPU. Right, fine, but let's talk about the graphics cards. So that's a huge amount of different cards that could theoretically be, and which card specifically? Now, obviously, now we're starting to get into this whole GCN architecture thing with AMD, and of course, Nvidia have their own thing with the SMXs, which are pretty similar. You know, they're kind of interchangeable. There was a few differences here and there. But generally speaking, they're pretty interchangeable in terms of their basic overview. But if you were to look at this, the amount of ROPs, the texture units, everything is completely different. So it's not really easy to code. You can't say, okay, well, I'm going to code for, you know, the GTX 660. Just for example, throwing out there. Because, you know, you might have more. And that's where APIs, it's their job to basically take the game's workload and spread it lovingly over all the cores. Of course, I'm vastly simplifying this, but I'm just trying to give you guys an idea and improvements on this. And, you know, DirectX at the start sucked. Like, the first few DirectX versions, it was like, really? It's using DirectX? But, 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 OpenGL, please, 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 sir, let me use OpenGL. And you would basically be begging for the game to be using OpenGL for your graphics render. I, I, sh I crap you not. I was going to say something else there, but it wouldn't be very professional. And, of course, if you're a 3DFX user, holy crap, you would just pray to the gods for an open, uh, 3DFX Glide uh, wrapper. But regardless, DirectX improved... But when you got this multi-core rendering issues, and really, to be honest, this it started to improve in DX9 and 10 started to improve it further, and 11 improved it even further. But we're still not really where we want to be. And AMD have started to kickstart this movement, which I do, you know, I rate them for. Really, to be honest, I I'm happy they did that. But it's going to be very interesting how pretty much everything ties in. So I'm very curious to see how Mantle is going to survive in this larger ecosystem, particularly if they're all going to be fairly low level. What I'm hoping for, and hoping is not the same as confirmed, okay, so don't, you know, be quoting on me and saying, you know, Paul from RGT said this. Okay, I speak to AMD occasionally, but still, I'm just throwing this out there. What would be really nice is if they could all agree to a certain level of baseline features which could then be used on future cards so in other words it's kind of like a standard language and then you know there are some shinies here and there based upon the card that would be pretty great i'm not exactly sure how it would work in practice there would definitely have to be quite a lot of uh, cooperation between all of the vendors and 
Microsoft as well if it's direct X it would be it would be very interesting but if that did work I have a feeling that the PC gaming space would benefit exponentially actually um simply because anyway this turned into a bit of a rambly video originally I created this video and I only thought hey you know what it's only gonna be a couple of minutes long then I remembered it's me and I don't ever seem to be able to do anything in a relatively short period of time when it comes to these type of things so hopefully you've managed to stick with me and uh, kind of grin and bear it. Regardless, I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.